Chair Milk Lounge, episode number 342. Daddy. Yes. Pink. Pink. Yeah. Yep. Pink. You get YouTube. The YouTube. Uh, in theory, I'll have Super Mario Advance coming out. Uh, Super Mario Advance 2 coming out. In practice, I might not have Super Mario Advance 2 coming out. But in theory, it should be coming out. Woo! Addy! Alright, so... Uh, on Monday... Oh, wait, actually. Oh, uh, I forgot. Never mind. When... Yes, Monday. Huh. Uh, two videos, actually. One of them is Kingdom Hearts. The second tournament arc begins. I think the second tournament arc begins and ends in this video. I forget. Oh! Uh, but, Coliseum? Yes. It's shocking how quickly you can run through those tournaments. It's it's insane. It didn't help or didn't hurt uh, that one time when I when I really sat down and was just like, okay, I'm gonna fucking shut up and just make like a highlight reel. Uh, the video got corrupted. <laughs> oh! So, I, I didn't lose anything. Thankfully, like, like you know, I there, there wasn't like you know any hype moments or whatever that, that I, I really missed from the overall playthrough. It is just funny that that happened. Yeah, especially the first couple of tournaments is like, all right, you missed out on two minutes of me beating on a fat heartless. Yeah, it it, it, it was it was more like okay, you missed out on me beating uh, Yuffie and Leon together. Woohoo! Wow. <laughs> Yeah, Leon's real hard when you first start uh, Traverse Town. Other than that, though, him, he's kind of a joke, and I don't even remember how Yuffie fights. Uh, Yuffie's uh, honestly harder than Leon. I don't know how, but I beat, beat Leon first try in, in Traverse Town, and this playthrough was on Proud. Ah. Don't you get a bunch of extra loot if you do that? Oh, you get, you get a high elixir or something like that, I think. Oh, shit, that's not bad. Yeah. That can but, get you through Clayton. Yeah. Oh, no, it didn't. Because <laughs> on Proud... Well, yeah, Proud Clayton is probably a different story. Yeah, on, on Proud, Proud Clayton goes, I'm going to shoot now. And, and then, did you, once you hear, hear that sound, once you hear him say, I'm going to shoot now, that if you don't press dodge that second, you are dead. Yeah, he activates King Crimson and shoots you in the, the past. Yeah. You don't even get the Bucciarati bullshit where, where, where you're, you're there, but you still get to live on for like half a year. Hmm. But yeah. That then, also on Monday, uh, Control Operation Galuga, the review of that is coming out. Oh shit. Yeah. I definitely do not know what's going on there and definitely have not already seen this. Yeah. A month ago, when the, when the video was finished. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess as a sign for the reviews, uh, the October review, the Shadow the Hedgehog, that is done. I have figured out what to do for the next one, but it's gonna take me a while because I actually need to like play through the game and write notes and all that because the game doesn't have a, an easy way for me to go between uh, the parts that I want, so I might as well be thorough. Hmm. That's gonna take a, take a while. And I already have our game plan for for December. It's just it just depends on how much time I'll have uh, while doing school too, I guess. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So that, that's what that's it for the reviews. Then on September fourth, I don't know what day that is. Probably Wednesday, I think. <laughs> uh, I forget my own own video schedule. I can, I, I release videos every every week on the same days, and I still never know. Either which way. Yeah. We, we go, we, we take a night at Horing. It's Star Wars Masters of the Rescue Sai. Ah! Because, oh, oh. yeah, while, while playing Stars, the Plasma Sword, I made mention of Star Wars Masters of the Rescue Sai, and I went, oh no, now that, I, now that I talked about it, I have to play it. And no, so you I don't. Did. <laughs> yeah. That's the way I did it. Let me tell you, that game is a game. <laughs> A technicality. I take it you did not do Chewbacca combos. Oh no, like the, like the name implies I was playing as whore. Oh no! Yeah. 
the most bewildering thing about that game is that every character starts off with a with a with a head to hand stance. And even the AI oh. and even the AI, as soon as you load in, the first thing the AI does is take out their weapon. Because the hand to hand stance has two attacks, maybe three. Oh no. And that's universal. So yeah, that game has some that had some interesting. Uh, it had some interesting, yes. I mean, no matter what, trying to make a Star Wars fighting game, it's okay. So obviously, for much of the cast, it's going to be lightsaber fights. Oh no! Here's the thing. Oh there, no! There's, there, there's there's two lightsaber people in in the cast. It's Luke and Darth Vader. Okay. No Palpatine. Well, I guess Palpatine didn't use a lightsaber in the original trilogy, did he? I don't think Palpatine is playable. The final oh. boss is Vader. Oh, yeah. The the, the, the roster is uh is uh, Luke Vader Hor, who is a Tusker Raider. Uh, Leia, Leia with a uh, with a uh, uh, bounty hunter mask on, which only slightly changes her. Han Solo, Chewbacca, and I think one of the uh, one of one of the big people. Well, it's what it came out in the '90s, so Boba Fett would have already been ascended to the title of Star Wars Smart oh, yeah. Mark God. Oh yeah, I think I think Bobbert is there too. Yeah. Would most of the arcade mode not be Luke beating up Han and Leia and Chewie? Yes. What the fuck? <laughs> that is how the movies went. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh. <laughs> So, wait. Yeah. I have to ask. So, how's the blocking mechanic? Is it hold back to block or is it press the block button? It's whatever the game fucking feels like. Okay. Now, <laughs> if Luke swings with his lightsaber at Leia and she blocks, what happens? Leia blocks it. Okay. So, I ask you. How do the non-lightsaber characters block? With their hands? With a weapon? That depends on whether you have the weapon out. If you have the weapon out, you block with the weapon. If you don't have the weapon out, you block with your hands. So Leia, Princess Leia. Okay, let's actually let's switch from Leia because Leia at least is supposed to be somewhat force sensitive. Yeah. Han Solo, Luke Skywalker swings his fucking lightsaber at Han Solo. Han Solo just sticks his hand up and goes no. Yeah, Han, Han has uh, sexually tra transmitted force powers. <laughs> okay, what about Chewie? He, he has large enough fur, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you smell burnt. You smell singed fur everywhere. Uh. God, it'd be horrible. But now that we're talking about plasma sword and shit, I, I just might remember the uh, not Chewbacca that they introduced called Gamoff. and <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can find out an image. I just made a realization. Yeah. So part of Star Wars lore is that the Jedi once got into a war with the Mandalorians, right? And the Mandalorians realized that the Jedi reflexively block laser shots with their lightsabers. Look, look at this so instead, Yeah. Uh, Voice text. I see. Okay, that's a plasma sword character, right? Yes. Yeah, I looked at that and I immediately went, that is a 90s Capcom design. It is, this is very obviously uh, not Chewbacca. We, we, we definitely did, did not try to pitch this game as a Star Wars game first. Yep. And LucasArts turned uh, Capcom down in favor of Masters of Terrors Kasai, right? Yep. Oh, man. What you were saying? Oh. 
if memory serves, the lore is the Mandalorians figured out, well, we should just start making guns that shoot bullets. Because when the Jedi go to block the bullets with their lightsabers, then it melts down the bullets and the hot lead hits the Jedi in the face, right? Yeah. Well, what just occurred to me is, well, why don't the Jedi just use the Force to catch the bullets instead? Because yeah. they're stupid. Just shoot the just bullets back with the Force. Yeah, I was about to say, just do that Magneto shit. Catch the bullets in midair, turn around, return to sender. Okay, but now imagine, imagine a force user that doesn't doesn't use a light, light lightsaber. They just have bullets in in their mouth and they shoot them out with the force. You know, I mean, anytime you have a force user that doesn't use a lightsaber, that's automatically interesting by default. That I feel like that must have been a boss fight in a platinum game at some point. Okay, you know what character is very similar to that that I'm thinking of? Yeah, I forget. Have you ever watched or played uh, Metal Gear Solid Three, Addy? Oh, I watched it, yeah. So, the main villain dude, what was his name? Volkov or something or other. Do you remember how he would hold a bullet between each knuckle in his hands? Oh, yeah. And then he would use his electricity powers to electrify his hands so his, the bullets would just shoot out of his knuckles? Yeah. I just also also like the idea of a force user using using like real ass bullets to fight, and they they do it in the most fucking rubber rubber hose like uh, what should we call it burlesque way? Because <laughs> <laughs> like like you know using using like uh watermelon seeds as bullets, and they should you know like spinning them out and then them becoming like bullets, but it was just like an old bit in cartoons. Uh, there's been a few times in Marvel that Magneto has killed people by just simply taking nails out of a nearby building. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I just saw the other day Someone unironically happily posting art of Magneto. And it's Captain America, Iron Man, and Wolverine. And they're all getting ready to fight him. And just people naturally posting in the comments. These are the three Marvel heroes that should be least interested in fighting Magneto. <laughs> it was Captain America, Wolverine, and who? Iron Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like Magneto could reach Metal one hand out for Wolverine. Magneto could like reach a closed hand out to Wolverine and then open his hand, and you can imagine what would happen to Wolverine. I mean, Wolverine conversely, Wolverine Magneto be... could reach out an open hand to Iron Man and close it into a fist, and you can imagine what would happen to Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with, with Wolverine, he, he could just revoke Wolverine's ball rights again. Yeah, skeleton rights removed, revoked, even. <laughs> When you think about it, once you cut out Adam the Adamam skeleton, while on one hand, yeah, that's going to cut out a lot of Wolverine's sheer invincibility, shouldn't that still make Wolverine, like, crazy strong because his musculature is built to try and move around a fucking 8,000-ton skeleton? So once you remove that skeleton, Wolverine should be super strong? But he should be super strong. He should be, he should be super fast. Well, he was too. both in his original debut. He just kind of got nerfed over time. Yeah. He did debut fighting the fucking Hulk. This is also very true. What? Like, mentally, the Hulk-Wolverine matchup in my head always simply boils down to Hulk punches Wolverine, Wolverine explodes, but then Wolverine grows back. Yeah. The Deadpool method. Yeah, more or less. So sometimes it's easy to forget because back then Wolverine didn't really have the healing factor. Right. Back then it was just played up as, oh, all mutants have some degree of healing factor, but it's like Spider-Man's healing factor. If you break Spider-Man's arm, he's not going to regrow it in a second. It's not going to just join back together. Spider-Man has to spend two or three days in a cast, but then his arm's back to new. Whereas for a regular human, that's going to take like months. Yeah. Like, mutants are just supposed to have that, and Wolverine just casually mentions at some point, ah, my healing factor will heal this injury in a comic from, like, the 70s. And then later on, that got turned into, if Wolverine explodes, then he'll just reform like fucking Lobo. 
<laughs> Which Deadpool and Wolverine credit where credit is due, it made sure to play that for every bit that it was worth in several fight scenes between Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh yeah. Uh, just these two assholes cannot die. It is pointless for them to be fighting each other. I recently saw a tweet where a person, a person was like, oh, it, uh, it was like a clip from the film where uh, one of them, I, I don't, I don't uh, remember who, but one, one, of, one of them wipes blood off of a, off of a sword with, with uh, like, uh, with their arm, more or less. No. And, and they, they, went, they went like, obviously, that's a reference to Ronin. Because, you know... It, it, it's not like we know that, that fucking Wolverine went to Japan and learned how to do, like, fucking samurai shit. <laughs> and, 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 and Deadpool is not a big weep who would do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, Logan has, Logan has a legit, legitimate reason to, know, to have the muscle memory to do that. Wade would go out of his way to do that. <laughs> It is yeah. justifiable for, for, for justifiable for both without it being a reference to fucking Rodin. Man, it, it, every media adaptation fucks up X Men by just not adapting as closely as possible. One of the best moments of Claremont's X Men is that Wolverine, for the longest time, is the, just this ignoramus brute that's like, ah, oh, he doesn't know nothing. He just likes fighting. And then one day, uh, I, no, he just shows up and he's like, hey guys, this is my Japanese wife, Kamiko. Uh, and, I, and yes, I am currently wearing a kimono. And all the other X Men are like, I'm, I'm sorry, what? And then Logan just replies in fully, you know, completely perfect Japanese. <laughs> and every other X Men, especially Cyclops, is just left there befuddled, like, wait, Logan can read? <laughs> oh, man. That was good stuff. Oh, uh, right. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know what's coming out on it. Uh, I There's a good chance that whatever I mentioned last week is coming out this week, because I think I forgot to upload most of it. So, there you go. Very nice. Now, give me a moment to log into the group YouTube channel so I can check that shit. Yeah, while, while you do that, yes. I, I guess we, we should we should thank all of all of the people who subscribed in the past like month because we we've had like a growth spurt of like twenty people <laughs> inexplicably. Hey. It's nice they're not watching these, but it's it's cool yeah. to know. <laughs> I don't blame them for not watching these, but hey, they are these are the designated <laughs> Sunday Sunday videos, but until we until until we, we have so so much fucking overlap that I can just go all right, fuck it. it here's a series that also check your battle lines, like I do with with FGA now. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Tomorrow, September second. Monday, Capcom vs. SNK2, Addy Learns. The day after, Tuesday, September 3rd, CVS2, Part 9. The day after that, Wednesday, September 4th, Payday 2, Part 26. The day after that, September 5th, Thursday, Z Street Fighter 6, Part 27. I really call it Z Zangief, Part 27. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> But, uh, if if it if it release uh, if if it release it enough in of uh, episodes of Street Fighter Six and you, you put the right frame the, the frames of it together, then you can summon Zangief. Yeah. <laughs> well, what it is, what the frames you have to put is forward, down, forward, down, down, back, back, up, back, up, up, forward, heavy punch. <clears throat> Nonetheless. And then Friday, Phasmophobia Part 32. Nice. And then I think yeah. we have an FGA this week as well. Yes, we do. But that isn't filmed yet. Yeah.
All right. Ah! <laughs> He's dead now. Yep. This this podcast is being recorded in memoriam of Alex. He fell. I didn't, but the mic did. <laughs> oh boy! All right. <clears throat> Here's a topic. Well, with Marvel Rivals being the talk lately because it's Overwatch, but better with a Marvel skin and coming from a scummy company. What's one game or franchise that you wish had a competitor? That was similar, but just better. All right. E easy answer for other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's such a weird one, though, because like, do they? How much of the for honor model do they want to imitate? Yeah. Overwatch has a thing where you can cleanly pick out. Okay, the early days of 2016, everything was great, and things just kind of spiraled downwards from there. It's not even necessarily that Overwatch's gameplay per se feels bad so much as it is that the balance just got so out of whack. And they, it became mired in so many goddamn controversies. Yeah. I mean, the, the problem... And for a lot yeah, of people, such as myself, who have been away for goddamn ever, the, ro the roster has now doubled, and I don't know what these new characters are. Yeah. Meanwhile, for me, it's, it's always been the same. Please release uh, Zenyara and, and John Kratz so that they can be used by other IPs. Yeah, that's, yeah. All I, that, that's all I have on out of Overwatch. <laughs> At this point. Mm. And Zenyatta's such a unique playstyle. Like, Junkrat, I can just say, like, well, we could just start playing TF2 more, and you can play Demo Man, because Junkrat is just kind of a shittier Demo Man. But Zenyatta, See, but that's not, not... That's, that's not entirely true, because de demos are uh, explosive jumps don't work exactly the way Junkrats do. Oh, yeah, they're, they're a good bit more difficult to pull off, but they also have a lot more depth. There's a lot more yeah. you can do with them. Sticky jumping is a skill that has to be cultivated. And uh, I love Demo Man, but I, I am not a sticky jumper. I am a Demo Man who does well because I am excellent with the other bomb launcher that Demo Man has. Yeah. And it's been so long that I doubt I'm still good at the pill physics, so there you go. Be pill be physics? Yeah, me, so, me, uh, yeah, Demo, Man, Stimmy, Demo Man main is often called the standard grenade launcher, the pill launcher, because the grenades that it shoots out look like pills. Ah. Uh. But yeah, like, the, the, last, time, last time we played, uh, we, we played TF2, I felt like I was better, better with Pyro because I'm a furry and that, that gives me like 15% more, more fire damage in TF2 specifically. Yeah, Pyro, <laughs> there, there, there are just certain class types. The edgier you are, the more powerful your sniper. The 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 furrier you are, or the, the gayer you are, the more powerful your pyro. The angrier you are, the stronger your medic. Yeah, but, Stop yeah, engaging that angry healing. And Pink, you know what's up with angry medic, because you can probably remember angry mercy. Oh, <laughs> The, the, the best way the best way to learn, learn how to play medic TF2 is to get tilted at the towers. Yep. Which I've learned uh, it has been divulged for like fucking four years now. Oh. So the, my only my only Fortnite reference hasn't existed since I've known of it more or less. Ah. <clears throat> Nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, there's Zenyatta is so unique, you know. Yeah, because like he's not. Can kind anyone of... here think of any characters that play similar to Zenyatta, even outside of the multiplayer FPS genre? I don't know. I guess it also dep depends on like what you personally find Zenyatta as. Because to me, he's not quite a DPS, but he's not quite a healer. He's the middle ground where he can deal damage, but he can't deal that much damage. But he, he can do healing, but he he's not the best healer. He he. Zenyatta is almost like, I don't want to say a rhythm game because that's entirely wrong. He, there's no per se rhythm he has to fit into. But Zenyatta is a character that has to constantly be on the ball yeah. and recognize, okay, I need to flip from this guy needs a bit of healing. I can do that to, okay, there is obviously one member of the enemy team who needs to go and then we can kill the rest easily. So I pick him out for the damage debuff. Or excuse me, the weakness debuff. Yeah. 
I guess well, TF2 will have similar stuff, but never on the same character. Because Scout can more or less do the same thing as Zenyatta's heal buff if he gets Mad Milk. And Sniper can do the damage buff or the damage debuff, whatever you want to call it, with Jurati. And granted, those are both characters throwing bottles of liquid at an, e at an enemy or a teammate. But you can't put both Jurati and Mad Milk on the same character. Hmm. Have you noticed that I relate everything Overwatch back to TF2? Yeah. I mean, it is the closest uh, thing that we have. Yeah, I mean, Overwatch was blatantly TF2 plus mobile mechanics. Yeah. Which I guess to get back to the to topic as well, like my, my problem with answering the, this uh, seven four other is just like that, like a lot of the things that I would want competitors for, or or I either already have competitors or are in the process of getting competitors, because like, all right, Assassin's Creed, Ghost of Tsushima came out, it was Assassin's Creed but good, <laughs> so you know. So so there, there's that, Smite. I love Smite. I want Smite to be better, which is why I wanted to have competition. Deadlock. Yeah. Like so, someone I saw people going like, I, I don't know how I feel about this because it's it's not it's not just fucking Counter Strike again. And then finally someone said it's Smite, and I went, Oh, I get it. <laughs> yep. That's what I keep hearing is that it's Smite, but like character building is easier. Yeah. And instead of gods fighting, it's nineteen thirties men fighting. Yeah. <laughs> One of the one of the descriptions is just this guy is an asshole. Yeah, yeah. Like there are a good few biographies that are finished. There's a good few that are half done, and then there's one character they honestly just like will write the rest of this later. For now, let's just say he's a dick. <laughs> I don't like that. Deadlock is so bizarre. Where they were just, they just abruptly started handing out codes to people. Yeah. And didn't have like any kind of thing on like, you're not allowed to say this or that. Like, there wasn't, uh, there's was no NDAs. They hadn't announced the game. Well, that's, the, that's the thing. Like, Valve. So, so what, what, there was an NDA for a while, but that was only for like, that was only before they actually went, all right, fuck it, everyone figured out that we're, ma we're making that lock. And then, then, then there was a month of time when there was still an NDA, but everyone has already figured out that they're working on that lock and that people are getting in. And so they went, all right, fuck it. You can you can join the, the alpha or whatever, it is easier. And also you can just talk about it, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> what? The game is effectively in pre-alpha, and people were just walking into the studio and playing it, yeah. practically. More or less, yeah. And just recording it. Valve just moves in unique ways. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people have also, also been... Uh, I, I think people have been data mining like Deadlock or something, and they, they found files that, that, refer that reference stuff in Half-Life uh, 3, more or less, and then they, oh. they and then they went, nah, ah, ah, and they just changed a word. <laughs> and everything else is the same. Man... So half ah, damn it. So like Half Life Three may or may not be in development. We don't know for sure, but there's sign signs point, point to maybe. Well, the existence of Half Life Alex confirmed that Valve wasn't just going to leave it and say fuck it, we can't do it. Yeah, I hope the subtitle of, of Half Life Three is "You're still getting nothing left for that three, though." <laughs> or TF Three or Portal Three. This is the only three you're getting. Fuck you. <laughs> you know the funny thing is, <clears throat> I mean, yeah. Val, uh, Val had to restructure away from the whole thing of just work on what you want because evidently it very quickly turned into everyone wants to work on Counter Strike and Dota. But I think the thing there is almost like a sense of TF2 has more idea that it's supposed to keep getting content over and over. And they can't really anymore because Soldier's voice actor is dead. Yeah. Left for Dead 1 and 2, it's like, yeah, those are kind of just complete packages. People have modded in more levels, but, like, I mean, when, Vol when Valve added Cold Water or whatever six years ago out of the blue, it's like, what the fuck? This, does this doesn't make sense. 
like cool bonus level don't get me wrong but the game actually didn't need this this is just kind of thrown on top unnecessarily i feel like that's a topic of for another day of like bonus content in a game that you honestly just kind of look at and you're like well this doesn't do anything to the rest of the game itself but at the same time this still just feels odd that they added it <laughs> So I just I just had the idea of like all right, half first three releases. Love announces their next game, Left Fortress Three. <laughs> <laughs> Left Fortal. Yeah. They're skipping three altogether. Instead of four, it's the number four. Fuck you, back for blood. It's ours now. <clears throat> four three. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, All right, for honor, for honor. Let's get back to that. If there was a for, for honor competitor, what would you like to see? I mean, I I think I'd like uh them to focus less on the mobile elements because the mobile elements were fine, but also made the game structured weird overall. I think. Yeah. I I think a uh, game with uh, with an in, with the in depth fighting mechanic and muscle elements would be fun. I don't know if if they should keep it keep it uh like strictly co-op or if it should be uh, competitive multiplayer or if it should have multiplayer at all. I would be fine with with, with just you know a single player crack at it at first and then we we try to figure out how to do multiplayer with this get up. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, you know, for 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 honor is is the uh this is you know is the fighting game stuff. They brought in fucking Katsuhiro Harada to hype it up, and he was like, "Man, I don't know what the fuck's going on." <laughs> Yeah. Cool game, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I think I, I think if uh, For Honor had a competitor, it should have uh, similarly in, in the fighting, fighting mechanic that it feels good to use. Which, because like, you know, I've seen people say that there's Absolver and, and Shifu, and on one hand, yeah, but on the other hand, I don't like the combat mechanic isn't quite as intuitive, to, in my opinion. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess that that's it for for honor. Thank you. Got an answer? Well. Uh, it's a good question, because as Addy was saying, it's hard to come up with something that's like, yeah, I really want there to be a successful and good competitor to the game I already like. But if you look at it, a lot of the options that I come up with are like, oh yeah, there are competitors out there, they just all suck. Well, that's the thing. I think that's still an acceptable answer, because I know for Civ you can go like, well, we've got humanity, humankind, but humankind sucks ass. Yeah. Right? From the, that, the I would say, almost, still, still to this I day. almost say... Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I, I want a good competitor to humankind. <laughs> whenever, whenever we talk about that game, there's still the only thing that I can, that can think of is fucking Yoshi's feet. <clears throat> Yoshi's feet? Yes. I feel like we discussed this before. You've explained it to me once before, and I forgot. You were there! It. You were there, pig! I know, but I don't remember. It, uh, while we were playing Soul Calibur Six, we were recording a video on that, and soon joined the call. And he was he was uh, prophesizing over there. Yeah, I remembering now. Yeah, he was he, he was talk, talk, talking it. up. He was talking up about. He was talking up humankind and how it, it will be the second coming coming of Jesus Christ. And then he he posted. On, I love soon. And then he posted an Im image of like a, a Yoshi foot fetish image. Of like Yoshi licking feet, yeah. or Yoshi licking his own feet, yeah, I forget, something, something like, like that. that. I love Soon like a brother. But, Humankind is to me the funniest goddamn example of a bad tendency Soon has. Of an aggressive need to find the gems in the rough that no one else has. Where he will find the most shit-ass knockoffs of better games. And be like, yo, guys! And try to get everybody in, and it's like, yeah, this is just shittier Civ soon. I'm sorry. I I know you, I know you're really tickled pink that you found a hidden gem in the rough here, but it's not. 
<laughs> also, that's why he likes Fallout 3. And he does that a lot. You guys don't see it as much, but he uh, now me and him don't talk quite as much nowadays. What with him having going through the moving and all that, but he used to do that a lot. There are some games in my Steam library that I look at, and I just go over and it's like, "Yep, that was a soon idea. That was a soon idea. That was a soon idea." <laughs> it gives like fucking furry Hitler. I luckily no. <laughs> Those ones, at the very least, I would have been able to say, yeah, soon, no. <laughs> but nonetheless, I do pass through my Steam library and sometimes go, oh, yeah, Black Desert Online. I remember when that was a soon idea. <laughs> uh, I tried out Black Desert Online years ago. Because, because I, I was like, you know, maybe I should give MMOs a try again. So I tried out like, a couple couple of them back-to-back that were on PS4. And... I tried a Black Desert Online, made my character, and went, went hey, this combat, me combat mechanic is, isn't half bad. And then the game was like, okay, now you must sit in the town for an entire real-life day. And then I uninstalled the game. <laughs> uh-huh. Do you want to know what Soon's idea was? What? Oh, yeah, yeah that you, you'd, ver you'd do, do the grinding for him. Uh-huh. He was, he was like, hey, you like playing Minecraft, so that must mean you like grinding. And I was just kind of like, Okay, I guess I'll go along with this. And it took like an hour before he soon lost all his enthusiasm because he was ultimately just drawn in by the character creation system. Yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> I remember liking the character, character creation system and I like most MMO players that I that I uh, know of did tend to dislike the, the uh, Eastern style, style of, you know, trying to make like an actual combat mechanic instead of just macros for abilities. I tend to like it, but it also depends heavily on the on the execution. The execution in Black Desert server was quality. Yeah, exactly. That I guess that that was the bigger issue. Yes, that you mentioned. It wasn't really the execution because the execution was fine. The problem was that even though I was connected to the to the EU servers, the lag made it so that my hits were half a second later than, than they actually happened. Yeah, you can't really do cool co active combat systems with that much lag. Yeah. See, I do remember thinking that it had an excellent character creation system, but at least part of it was because this was 10 years ago. And it was a character creation system that allowed you to actually make fat people. Nice. And when it, and when it said make fat people, it didn't just mean skinny people, but with huge guts. Because we've all, we've all at some point cracked open Fallout 4 and went, I'm going to make a fat character this time. And all the fat slider does is it makes your character have a bigger waist. Right, it just makes him a bit wider. I don't think yeah, that it just makes your character, It just makes Eggman. Yeah. <laughs> and you remember, Fallout 4 only has one fat NPC in like the entire game, which is the mayor of Diamond City. He's the only fat dude in the entirety of the fucking Boston wasteland. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I've turned on Fallout 4 since I made the my one fat dude a corrupt politician. Yeah. You don't have to say politician twice. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes I'll think like, man, if I had the power to, it'd be so cool if you could go back to the prior Fallout games and the Elder Scrolls games and add the ability to make fat people. Now diversify the world so much. And I have to stop and go, okay, but what NPCs do I retro retroactively go back and make fat? The correct answer is all of them. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alduin. No, not Alduin. Parthornax. Yes. Turn Parthornax into the fat dragon from Dungeons and Dragons that can't fly. It just rolls. Par Parthornax's name kind of glitchy just to party snacks. <laughs> He's still just like, is it better to be born evil and become good or born good, born good and stay good? And he's all philosophizing and shit, and the graybeards are like, yes, great wisdom. While, like, his legs can't reach the floor. <laughs> yeah. he, he's doing, he's doing the, like, the, uh, the, the fat cat sit. Where they sit kind of like a <laughs> human, but... but, but... <laughs> <laughs> they sit the wrong angle, the tail looks like they got a long penis. Yeah. There's still the two skinny young dragons that are trying to look to Parthornax for wisdom. But they're, they're, they're like standing like normal, like regular skinny dragons in Parthornax. Like Parthornax has to bounce very carefully so he doesn't fall off the high Rothgar and roll all the way down into Iverstead. Yeah. 
the people of Iverstead below just look up and go, what's that coming off the mountain? It's an avalanche. Oh no, no wait, even worse. It's a rolling fat dragon. Just plows over the inn. People run in terror. If you wish, if you wish to hear my wisdom, bring me more gray beards. <laughs> I need. I require more sweet rolls. Yeah. For this next text, you, the next task, you 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 must bring bring me five five whole wheels of cheese. <laughs> I will now teach you the shout. Food, much food. It just makes sweet rolls and cheese rain down from the heavens. <laughs> how, I, how did I get like this? You must learn this tomb, and it's just, just fucking Big Smoke's order. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now use, use it on the local cooker. <laughs> um... <laughs> I just had a thought. They should, if they added fatness to Skyrim, they should totally make Sky Nazim fat. Yeah. <laughs> well, he brags about going to the Cloud District, but when he gets up the stairs, he starts wheezing. <laughs> he has he has a unique interaction. Very very. If you if you hit him on uh, unarmed, then he just falls down and rolls on the ground. <laughs> Like he he rolls down stairs. He just jiggles. Yeah. But like, imagine if they had to code, code in actual like physics so that he he would roll down slopes. Yeah. <laughs> Dragon porn, stop me. Somehow I can just imagine that nasally voice as he's rolling down the hill, going hmm. I also feel like it, it, it would be funny for the Night Mother to be fat. Well, she wouldn't be able to fit in the casket. No, it's just a very white casket. <laughs> I then, feel like that farmer dude would have even more questions for Cicero. Like, yeah, what, why is that casket so big? And Cicero's like, ah, I'm, a, I'm a little, the trickster, bye. Why is that casket so big? And why, are you, why aren't you buff if you're carrying it around? <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. If we're adding the fat system from Fallout 4, we might as well adding a fat slider. We might as well add a muscle slider. So get beefy Cicero. Yeah. He's, he's built like a fucking Hokuto Ken connector. You walk into the capital of the capital building of White Run, and you expect to see good old standard old skinny skip Yarl Balgriff on the throne, and you, he's just ripped, and he's not wearing a shirt anymore. Yeah. He's still talking uh, talking about the, uh, the 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 boys back home talking about his pussy though. He's got an Argonian stripper to either side. Yeah. I also oh, just like my homies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also like like imagining like like how much different Oblivion would be because I think Oblivion had him. How much different Oblivion would be if if the the adoring fed was ripped. <laughs> but he still doesn't do anything. He still runs away. Yeah. Uh. Oh shit. Well, they've still got the horrible potato heads on top of a totally like a very high quality texture ripped body. Yeah. But then above the neck, it's it's just. Maximum Mr. Potato Head. Okay, I gotta step out real quick to put away these, this dish, but I'll be back. Alright. Alright. Well then, uh, Pink. Yes. Uh, I guess, it, did, did you even answer? Because you said, well, you know, safe as hum humankind, but... Right, I was uh, trying to... Safe as humango. Yeah, civilization was my first initial answer. Then I was like, wait a second, we had humankind, which flopped. And then over the course of a few years, it got to a point where it's not a complete flop, but it's still a flop. And then uh, in uh, recent months, uh, Millennia dropped, which I've not played that. I've not looked into that whatsoever. But that is a Civ competitor 
that if it was good, I would assume I would have heard a lot more fanfare for it, but it just kind of fell by the wayside. And uh, also, years before that, there was Old World, which was developed by developers who worked on Civ V, and that one kind of doesn't get any fanfare, so I've not looked into that either. Uh, this September, the 20-something, uh, Ara History Untold is dropping, and that's got, like, no press so far, so I'm eager to see how that one turns out. And then February of next year, we'll get Civilization VII, <laughs> so uh, we'll have had eight, nine years or something like that of Civ VI with ev without ever having gotten a, like, legitimate Civilization competitor. At least a competitor that is operating at the standards of where it would be a... What is the word? It would be... What, what's the word? There's a word here that I'm not getting, but it would be a uh, substantial actual competitor to Civ 6 in its lifespan. But no. Uh, let's see. What other games do I play that could benefit from a uh, competitor? Oh! WWE. Dig what? WWE? You know, we've, we had wrestling games be garbage what? for so long, and now they're good, and then the, the competitor comes out, and their game is so garbage, it just made 2K looking better by every stretch of the imagination. What do you so mean? I fight, fight Forever is great. It 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 it, uh, it it has Kenny Kenny Omega. It has a battle royale mode, and it has a uh, yeah. it it, ha it has Kenny Omega's OC. Yeah, those guys, those things. Yes, it has it has half of the SmackDown vs Raw twenty twenty ten roster. <laughs> kind of. But but you see, it's fine because because half of that half of the roster is DLC. Yeah, yeah. Did they add Lance Archer at some point? Probably. I don't know. That roster itself is just a delight on its own. It really is. It's so abominable. Yeah, there's so many, so many decisions that went into that roster, and uh, to this day, it's still quite incomplete and quite a head scratcher. It's it's quite out of date. Yes. Like the thing is that decision of, okay, we're not going to make more AEW games. We're just going to keep adding on to this one, so that every time anyone opens up that roster screen, they're going to immediately have CM Punk and Andrade and Cody Rhodes staring them in the face. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I played through the, the story mode because uh, I had nothing. Like, it, it was free PS Plus, and I, I, I said, okay, there's literally fucking nothing to do in this game. I might as well. And it was so funny that uh, that I played as fucking Jahardi because he, he's in there, and it, it's just his fucking 2K model, more or less. <laughs> and. Mm -hmm. And they're like they're fucking uh the story story is like uh new up and comer Johardi is here to make us flesh in AEW. Man, Johardi, do you have any, any words to say? Well, here's the thing, Jack. I love the young box. I love Kenny Omega and I love my favorite AEW wrestlers, Cody Rhodes and CM Punk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And then, and then, then nothing happen, happens for for like an in-game year, and then the story, the the, the mode ends. <laughs> like there, I think there there was one thing where where they someone stole Jahardi's gear, so he had to go out and wrestle in, in a shirt and pants, which is his gear. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so you know, <laughs> a radical change for this character. <laughs> You see, it, 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 it was slightly less baggy pants and no arm warmers. <laughs> it makes all the difference. Ah, uh, but yeah. But yes. Yes, indeed. 
I think part of the thing for you, Pink, is going to be like, off the top of my head, what's one game that like I know Pink loves and there's not really any capability for him to play it anymore? Is Marvel Ultimate Alliance. But a big part of that hinges on the Marvel li- license. Yeah. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, if DC were to come out with the Ultimate Alliance competitor, that would be pretty badass. I'd play that if it were good. It, it, would, have all of your, it would have all of your favorite D- DC superheroes like Batman and Batman and Batman. Well, yeah. that becomes, see, the thing there is that there would be Batman focus, but for an Ultimate Alliance game, it would probably be a lot of Batman's, you know, the Bat family members. And Pink, and would I be incorrect to say that you generally like uh, the rest of the Bat family better than Batman? I'm a big Dick Grayson fan. I uh, really like Robin as a concept. I don't even d- hate Batman to a certain degree. It really depends on how he's written. And uh, for team-based royalists like that, it probably wouldn't be so bad. But, uh, yeah, uh, my least favorite Bat family characters. Oh, by the way, make Alfred Pennyworth a playable character. Yeah. My least favorite Bat Family characters would be uh, Batman himself, because, you know, n- n- I'm just never a fan of him to begin with. Uh, and uh, Batgirl, not a fan of Batgirl. Never saw the appeal. Well, what, about, what about... <laughs> yes, uh, Barbara Gordon. Yeah, I, I actually agree. I don't see the magic in her that a lot of people do. Uh, what about the uh, what, what about the uh, the little black kid in the yellow suit that, that was supposed to be Robin but then wasn't, but then was a bad family member but then wasn't, and then he just ceased existing? Yeah, that dude. Oh boy, the one the one guy that Batman said Bane's coming back to Gotham, and he says it's going to be personal this time. Bat family, I need you to all leave Gotham. And that kid was the one one that actually said okay and just left Gotham. <laughs> That's messed up. Also, I feel like there, there's something, something needs to be said about the, the fact that the only black bat, bat family member got, got a bright yellow suit. <laughs> well, ja- uh, before him, there was Lucius's uh, kid or nephew, but he just abruptly one day decided he hated being a bat family member and quit. Fair enough. What was it? Batwing. Batwing. Very a gold yeah. bat character. Yeah. I have to play. <laughs> he was a transformer. <laughs> you know, look, Lucius, how did this happen? Look, I got drunk once with a plane. It had, the shit went down. I mean, try, try to try to do. Bad, bad thing had a much better outfit than the, the the kid who I presume is you were. Yeah. That. Dude, he was there from the beginning in Rebirth because I think he came in like within the last storyline or two of New Fifty Two, Batman. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and then like before, before even Re- Rebirth was over, he, he he just ceased existing. If memory serves. Yeah, one of those characters that was honestly just thrown in for token purposes, but no one knows what character they want him to have. Yeah. I, if there was no Spider-Verse movies, then Miles Morales probably would have went much the same way. Yeah. I, you know, the, at, at least we have to give it to the, to the Spider-Verse writers. They, 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 they figure out a way to make Miles Morales actually be a character and not just Black Peter. Yeah. This is true. Like, it, 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 it turns out people will like the character if he's not just other character. Also. <laughs> like... Uh. Oh boy. It also doesn't hurt that they removed his uh, fat companion from the Spider Verse films if memory serves. Oh! Oh shit. Yeah, Genki's not in the Spider Verse movies because he has to be because Ned in the main in the MCU is more or less just Genki. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and that sucks. Like Genki. Well, he's slightly better than Genki. But still. 
And, and I my, like my, Ned, but the coolest thing they can do with Ned is the thing that will make Gog flip a fucking gasket. That they should do it. Do it, because I don't want Gog to be happy. Yeah, because it will be really cool if Ned becomes Hobgoblin in the MCU. And Gog keeps going. Gog spent like two fucking straight years going, no! They should make. Yeah, just to just to upset him more, they should make make them be every goblin at once. He's the hobgoblin. He he's he's green goblin for like for like eight, two frames. He becomes a fucking hemo goblin. <laughs> fucking hemo goblin. <laughs> I love hemo goblin because we all the first times we saw the word hemoglobin did misread it as hemo goblin. Yeah, <laughs> and some Marvel writer just went, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> yes, we're doing that now. <laughs> I mean, there, there, there's some vitamin supplement that that uh, uh that, that we have, and it's called Intraglobin, and I I, I do call it Intragoblin. <laughs> Injecting directly into your veins. That's like the word for diplomacy between goblin tribes, Intragoblin. Yeah. The the real fucked up part of the of of uh, fucking uh, I don't know we we've had into and across out of the spider verse I guess I don't know what what would be the fourth one after out of the spider verse out of but what would be the, what would be the fourth, fourth one after that yeah all right. over <laughs> under yeah. sure under the spider verse it under the spider verse when, when oh wait never mind that's not, not a spider verse thing fuck it. <laughs> Perpendicular to the Spider Verse. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is Spider Man lost my home. <laughs> they should fucking make that and be every goblin, and then and, like he, he fucking even becomes that goblin from <laughs> the Raimi films. <laughs> oh God! I just thought of the fourth MCU Spider Man movie should be Spider Man Housing Crisis. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's that's actually the that, that's actually the, uh, the 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 subtitle to Spider Man Four that they're making. It's about the two thousand eight fucking crash. Spider Man Five homosexual. <laughs> it's just it, it, it's just the the fucking Mysterio kissing scene, but with the meme dub for two hours. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, actually, no. Fucking Spider-Man, home of sexual. <laughs> uh. Oh, the next movie, Peter's got no powers. He's got to make do with what he can around him. Spider-Man 6, home alone. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, he gives back his powers, leading us to the duology Spider-Man, homecoming, and downpour. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse you, you mean home poor and down coming. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I don't know why I feel the urge to explain that one to Pink, but fuck it. The last two, pretty well the last two Silent Hill games that sucked and everybody hated them except for the Shattered Memories uh, were called Homecoming and Down Poor, but the two games are very similar in a lot of ways and they're both similarly dog shit. So Silent Hill fans have a sometimes... Ha it started as an accident, but then it became a thing that was just done for laughs of actually referring to those two as homecoming, or home poor and downcoming. Uh. So there you go. There's that bit of lore. Feel free to feel free to flush that out the other ear uh, because that ain't going to come <laughs> back in any way. That it's important. In, in Spider Man, in Spider Man Seven, they we do a crossover with, with the Simpsons. It's just called Spider Man Homer. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's actually set on like Earth, uh, Earth eight five eight or whatever they call it. So, so it's Marvel Spider Man fighting Devil Homer. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Is it wrong that de think about evil Homer makes me want to start a Moogan again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it came in. It, it, it might have a nice play. Maybe.
Oh, I, I said oh. I sent you some some need to moving connectors. Oh yeah, Terry Bonk and real police man. I did see that. Yeah, Terry, 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 Terry and Bongo for some reason. Real police guy. Wanna KOF is another good one. <laughs> Oh shit! Uh, All right. Uh, uh, I, uh, I guess I should go ahead and say if I got a competitor yeah. in mind. Um. Oh. Uh, wrestling is a good pick, but you know, this is an oddball case. Where this is gonna be on one hand, someone is in the call right now that is pretty happy with what we've got. But at the same time, Pink, you've heard me bitch to no end about this game. I'd like oh, yeah. if there was a better competitor to Dead by Daylight. Oh yeah. Like, you know. I don't know what I'd want it to look like, because balancing those games is fucking hard. Though <laughs> Cam is a very Cam is a very pleasant surprise to see how much 2v8 mode actually does really tone down a lot of Dead by Daylight's issues. Yeah. So that makes me wonder, like, okay, well, part of why 2v8 mode was more fun is because on the survivor side, it didn't feel like the killers were wrestling you so much because there's seven other fucking jumping beans running around in front of them that they have to be like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Well, from the killer side, it doesn't feel nearly as stressful because you'll sometimes be in chase and it'll be high stress, but it's like, ah, oh, the other killer's probably doing something somewhere to keep us from shitting the bed too hard. And the fact there's so many players and so many generators means that the three gen never happens that causes the game to slow to a fucking halt and no team makes progress. Yeah. And it makes me wonder what the lessons are to be to observe from that. That's by Battle Royale. <laughs> All right, ten uh, killers, one hundred survivors. Exactly. That would be interesting. You would honestly, I feel like that even more than Dead by Daylight. You'd be crouched out in the hut and you're looking out the window and you see Jason Voorhees running after a dude. No, no, no. You see, fucking... you see five Jason Voorheeses. Running after a dude. Jason! Uh, what? There's four of the Jasons are wasting their own time. <laughs> that one dude is in the distance making noises like, oh, jeez. Oh, man. Like, when you say Battle Royal, I also think huge map, and subsequently there has to be better, like, transportation. So mentally, I'm imagining Jason Voorhees gets in a car. <laughs> now, it is worth noting, Michael Myers canonically does drive cars. This is true. In the background, uh, it's one of my favorite little things, is the one scene in Halloween 1, where it is actually Michael is in the background driving a car, and the camera never calls attention to it. You just have to pay attention and notice... Yeah, there's a dude. Michael's just there driving a car after to keep an eye on Lori. See, yeah. see I'm, 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 I'm kind of disappointed in that because I thought it would be funny if, if Michael didn't have didn't even have the ability to run, but he has a teleport that, that he can enable when no no when he he can be like uh with his view, the view of his can, the view of him can be obstructed by uh, environmental things. So like you just see Mike Myers go behind a rock and he doesn't come out from the other side. That's Jason. That's very much Jason. I mean, that's just that's just such a villain, one on one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I think with Michael, part of the thing is that Michael's probably not supernatural. So Jason and Freddy can legitimately have bullshit excuses. Like, okay, Jason disappears into the mist. Freddy, well, it's all a dream, so he doesn't really have to behave by any rules or logic. Michael, I don't. There's just something hilarious to me about the, uh, especially the idea that in this free roam, in this, not free roam, in this battle royal game, you as a survivor will be driving a car, and you look in the rearview mirror, and Michael is driving a sedan after you. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know what, this also calls into question, does Michael in the first Halloween movie, does he obey the laws of traffic? 
Well, he never got pulled over, so he must assume as much. I'm, I'm reminded of that episode of Batman the Animated Series where that guy cuts off the Joker in traffic on the highway. So Joker just decides to make his life hell. <laughs> like, you're just, you, you cut off some car in traffic and you're swearing at it and cursing at it. Hey, fuck you, motherfucker, blah, 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 blah. You turn around in your seat and you just see Michael Myers silently sitting still in the driver's seat. And just slowly you see him reach over with the off hand into the glove compartment. <laughs> Chucky, Chucky is driving around in one of, one of those, uh, like, car-shaped kid, kid uh, shopping carts. Chucky has to... Chucky can do that. Or he can drive a car, but first he has to find a stack of books and a brick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Ghostface also should be able to drive. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But who are the really stupid answers? I think I've already at some point joked about Nemesis driving a car, but he has to peel the roof off first. <laughs> and probably rip out the driver's seat and drive from the back. Where would the alien's tail even go? I just also like the idea of like you know some of these killers killers already have, have like teleportation and shit, but but they have limited range. So like the nurse, you know the nurse can teleport, but she she has asthma, so she can can she can do it forever. She also just gets in a car. You get. Nursa gains the ability for long can, to do uh, fast travel, long distance teleports if she finds an inhaler. Yeah. Also, like one yeah, use the, only. That's that's another thing. I guess. I guess. I think it would be fun if if in the, this the, 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 theoretical. There we go. Uh, that by uh, Battle Royale, if it's, instead of like choo choosing your perks and shit, you just found them. <laughs> Oh no, it's the Ni Nicolas Cage screaming perking, and this is the fourth one I've picked up. <laughs> You're playing killer, and it's like, oh, sweet, a purr. Oh no, it's a Huntress purr. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> this is useless. Is there even a basement on the Dead by Day on the Battle Royale map? No. Fuck. Crack open a chest on this rubber side. Ace. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh no! Oh man, like you know what the aliens' fast travel would have to be? What? The alien you're playing just scampers off into the wilds, and you take over for a chest burster waking up. Yeah. Deba Gorgon's Barbara since his tingle. Did <laughs> <sighs> you just use this time stop? <laughs> Legion smacks somebody and then runs at super speed. Yeah. <laughs> and remember, it's not a killing blow. So whoever you are, you just see Legion walk up and stab you, and then zoom off into the horizon. It's like, well, shit. Guess I gotta just sit here and heal myself now. If you're playing as the twins, it gives you a full on GTA 5 collector switch animation. Yeah. It cuts to... You're playing as Charlotte, and it cuts to a little shitter creep, and he's just having a smoke. Yeah. You cut back to Charlotte, she's doing the weird Trevor cutbacks. Um, <laughs> my favorite of those... Yeah. Did, did you guys ever get the show me your backstroke transition to Trevor? Probably. I don't think so, I did. One of the things you can transition to Trevor doing is he's out on a pier on the beach, and he's got a hipster at gunpoint, and they're alone on the pier, and it just cuts to Trevor pointing his gun at him and saying, Show me your backstroke! Fuck! 
<laughs> I remember that, that was one of those goofy things. You could cut to Trevor at any time, and there's a good chance that Trevor would start you off with a star rating. Yeah. This is true. Well, it makes sense for Trevor, but it was hard to lose the cops in GTA 5, so that was brutal. Yes. Like, I think there was at least once I switched to Trevor, and then I didn't beat the cops, and they just killed me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure so that I was switched. Good. Yeah, I just switched to Trevor and had to die and go back to the hospital and lose $2,000. Like, yep. thanks, fuckers. Yep. Oh, pyramid, right. head, pyramid Head's fast, fast, fast travel is just, he walks into the screen and then you can't control a, a, different, a different point of, part of the map. Pyramid Head, Pyramid Head fast travel, smack yourself through a chain link fence. Yeah. Oh, that's, to me, that's more, uh, probably the funniest moment of Silent Hill 2, and not even the... Like, the moment in and of itself is not funny. The humor is derived from the idea that Pyramid Head in that moment honestly represents that Silent Hill, the town itself, could not figure out a way to get James into the, into the padded room. Oh, man. All right. Well, I think that that's a pretty solid podcast right there. Yeah. Addy, say bye, Big Tins. Say what? In the roof. In the roof? If they touch the roof, then you should get that medically checked out. That seems like a problem. All right, bye. Ball. Oh.